Welcome to episode 20 of this 31 episode video series I'm doing in the month of March as I bring awareness to brain injuries. And today I'm going to talk about pain. And so today's episode on pain, I'm going to define pain and I'm going to describe an approach that the majority of practitioners are failing to use, which is resulting in enduring chronic pain for their patients. And the concepts that I'm sharing with you today are from practitioners who have solved the puzzle of chronic pain through mind-body medicine. One of these providers is Dr. Howard Schrubiner. He's, he's out of Michigan, healed many with chronic pain. He has a website called Unlearn Your Pain and a documentary called This Might Hurt, where he has a variety of people who have suffered with chronic pain their entire life. And as he has taken these neurological approaches to pain, he has finally healed them and turned their life around. Another one is Charlie Merrill. He runs Merrill Performance out of Boulder, Colorado, where he takes similar approaches. Look at their functionality and try to determine if there is an actual, actual injury causing the pain. And then he'll look into their sociological factors, their history in life, their emotions, all the basic variables that surround them in life to determine why is the brain creating these false signals of pain when there actually isn't damage there. The common perception that many of you are probably having right now, which is the same perception that a lot of people have with chronic pain, is you're telling me it's in my brain, this is BS, I don't believe you. In this documentary and in another documentary that's called The Pain Brain that is going to come out soon, these patients all had the same mindset. They didn't believe that either until they were healed and live a pain-free life because they retrained their brain to not create these pain signals when there is really not a legitimate tissue damage causing the pain. But what is pain? Let, let me read a definition here. This is from the International Association of uh, the Study of Pain. They say pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. So the only reason that we have pain in our life, pain is there to influence us to do something because we've been hurt. And, and I'm going to share some key things that you need to keep in mind. And if you have pain in multiple parts of your body at the same time, this is a key indicator that the brain is creating these pain signals. You find that your pain increases when the weather changes, or when stress increases, or when bad memories are triggered, or when you fail to achieve a desired goal. This is a signal that the brain is creating this pain. I'll share with you four key pieces of information that enable you to change your perception. And all this information I'm sharing with you is backed by the links I have in the description. First, let's talk about pain and the central nervous system. Check out episode 17 of the series to better understand the central nervous system where I talk about it. So pain activates the central nervous system to influence us to respond to a threat to protect us from potential damage to our bodies. This is both physical pain and this is emotional pain. And when the sympathetic nervous system is triggered by a legitimate threat or an emotional threat, the brain wants to protect areas that have been injured in the past, and this is done by sending pain signals to all these areas. Stress, worry, and anxiety will increase the pain. Let me give an example. As, as a battalion executive officer in the military and in the 82nd Airborne, as I would do a jump and my body would slam to the ground and I would be sore in different places, then I would get on the transportation and be driving back to base, my mind would begin to worry about everything I needed to accomplish, how busy my day was going to be. And that worry and thinking about all the tasks I had to complete would create an, a large amount of pain all over my body. Now let's look at the opposite side of it. Whenever I would do what we call a fun jump, which would be on a Saturday, and knowing right after that jump I was gonna go enjoy some fun times with the family, my mind was at peace. My mind was not worried of any threat. My mind was excited for something fun I was about to do. And there was a lot less pain. The sympathetic nervous system was not triggered, creating stress and worry with all the tasks I had to accomplish. When we choose to allow stress in our lives, will cause pain in those areas where we've been damaged before. The second piece of information is understanding the fact that your body has healed. There is no longer a threat, so the pain should not be there any longer yet it continues to linger there. The average time to heal, depending on the injury, you know, typically it's usually three to 12 months. And upon, upon recovery, after the injury is healed by the immune system, there's no longer a valid threat. As the injury is healed, it's gone. Your mind has become accustomed to the pain when you lift the arm, and it has trained your brain to turn on those pain signals every time you lift your arm. Now your arm is healed, and every time you lift your arm, you're gonna get that pain signal. And that is where you gotta rewire and train your brain not to send those pain signals any longer. This brings me to the third piece of information called brain plasticity, and I talked about this in previous episodes. It's the ability of the brain to learn new emotions, ideas, skills, and tasks. And science has shown that it takes anywhere from three to five months to completely retrain the brain to do this stuff. And during the time of recovery, every movement 
or sensation stimulated by any of your five senses can cause the pain in the area that the injury is occurring. Your brain has stored and recorded all of the information received from the five senses and remember and recalls when we sense these, we need to send the pain signal. This is where that brain training is required to change this perception. Now through MRI, scientists have looked at the brain of someone who was recently injured and noticed that the pain signals are coming from a portion of the brain, and I'll put it up here, you can see inside the brain, this is the insula. Now the amygdala, the thalamus and the amygdala will send signals to the insula that we have an actual valid threat or damage to tissue, and that'll send the signal to you that, hey, there is pain. So we need to allow the body to recover in that area. Then did an MRI and looked at the brain 67 days after the injury, when the injury should have been healed, and now the pain signals are coming from the prefrontal cortex, from the front, from the executive functioning. It's now been rewired and trained in the brain that in, whenever you do that movement, we need to send pain. So you are being told in your head, whenever a certain movement occurs, we need to send pain. So pain signals are being sent when the body has already recovered from that injury. This is how the chronic pain is developed and continues in the brain. And you can rewire and train your brain not to send the pain signals when you conduct those movements. Now the fourth piece of information is understanding the psychosocial aspects and variables. Everything you've been exposed to from birth until now, all of the storing of the data received from the five senses can trigger pain when there is not a valid damage to the tissue requiring pain. And the bottom line is the brain does not feel safe. So anything that has caused you to not feel safe in your life, childhood trauma, having a rough childhood when you grow up, if you were bullied, and also if you're an overachiever, if you're always worried about what people are thinking about, these have all contributed to the pain. And so these medical providers I mentioned in the beginning, that's what they address. They look at all these social factors and they begin to address those. And as they teach the people to force their mind to feel at peace, to not allow their brain to feel that they're in danger, they are now able to turn off the pain signals and sent by their brain and to retrain their brain to no longer send the pain signals when they are doing movements that usually cause the pain. In the following episodes, I'm going to provide examples of what you can do now to reduce your chronic pain. And then read the resources and links to what I have in the description of this video to learn more about how you can change your lifestyle and no longer deal with this chronic pain. Thank you for watching this episode. Please subscribe and click on the bottom right to watch the entire playlist for this series.